Harry Spedding. I'm the technical manager for the Extreme Sailing Series and we're currently in White Bay Cruise Terminal in Sydney, Australia getting ready for the final act of 2016. So uh, we've got eight teams, five of them already in the water, the rest just getting ready. Uh, this year we're using, moved on to the GC32 foiling catamaran. Uh, we moved to that at the beginning of this year and um, we're just getting ready for the finale. The, the two teams at the top of the leaderboard are just one point between each other, so everything to play for. GC32 is um, really the first full foiling large catamaran that's been uh, produced in big numbers. I think they're into uh, mid-20s now and uh, still being more being ordered, so a good, good machine. Basically, starting at the back of the boat, um, they're not fixed in at the moment because we're not ready to launch, but we have T-foil rudders, and uh, the T basically keeps the back end of the boat up or down as required, and uh, controlled using uh, a worm drive and a, and a continuous loop, so that we can change both rudders at the same time and uh, keep them the same. Um, the hulls are manufactured in Dubai at Premier Composites, and then the majority of the rest of the boat, the beams, the spines, the rig, uh, are all manufactured by Southern Spars uh, in various parts of the world. So the masts come from Cape Town, the beams come from Auckland, the spine comes from Sri Lanka, and then it's all put together as and where you need it, really. Crewed by five. Um, in fact, the GC32 class has just changed the rule. So if you want to have uh, female crew members, because they are smaller in stature generally, then we can move up to a maximum of six, but you are still within a uh, total maximum weight limit. And so hopefully that means we'll see uh, a few more female sailors joining the fleet. And so far, really, we've only had Sharon Ferris racing on Armstrong. We'd like to see a few more. Um, so yeah, we've got uh, eight teams racing here in Sydney. Uh, we have a uh, Danish team, SAP, we have an uh, Austrian team, Red Bull. Uh, these guys are Madeiran uh, from Portugal. We've got Australians, uh, we've got New Zealanders. And um, at the moment, at the top of the leaderboard, we have uh, Oman Air and Alingi, who are Swiss. So a real collection of teams from across the globe, which has been fantastic. So the catamarans themselves, uh, just under a ton in weight, all up, including all the sails and the running rigging and, and everything on board. And uh, they lift up on uh, J-foils, which are about two to just under three meters uh, in total length. And uh, essentially you lift up on one board at a time. So you tack or jive, you change from your, what was your leeward board across to the other side onto the next leeward board. And we just, uh, we've just seen a few teams experimenting recently with having two boards down for longer to give themselves a more stable ride through a jibe. Foiling jibe is very much happening. Uh, foiling tacks, not so much. Um, we're, we're, not, uh, we're not foiling early enough to be able to get a decent foil up wind. I think the VMG is still better in displacement mode. Um, but that is something we're looking at in the future, which is uh, it's an interesting part of the class. So with the, with the whole hydrofoiling system, essentially your one board passes down through the deck and then across towards the middle of the boat. So it's a, it's a, a flat platform underneath the boat. In order to change whether you're lifting up or dropping down, you change the angle of attack of the board. So you have your flat platform and you move it backwards or forwards. That's done at the top here. So essentially, your foil goes down like that and you move the back, you move the top backwards or forwards in order to change your angle of attack or angle of incidence. Uh, we have here where your foil passes down and then a continuous line that's moved and that moves your bearing face forwards and backwards. So it's actually a relatively simple system. It's just a, a worm screw, a continuous line and a bearing face and in principle that's all it is. Um, 
that we always had talks with people they want to move to hydraulics or they want to use an electrical system but at the end of the day this is actually pretty basic pretty foolproof and pretty cheap um, so we can keep things under control uh, the structure of the GT32 is relatively simple um, two hulls two beams going crossways and then you have a central spine system which is basically two compression tubes and they're pulled in together with a spine cable that runs along the underside and then you've got your king post and dolphin striker to give your uh, opposing forces to your mast and essentially without this central spine the whole thing will fold in upon itself so it's an area that we look after to your same controls as you do on any other boat so you've got your main sheet controls your traveler system and your traveler then runs up and back to make it more controllable by the trimmer uh, and then as you can see up forward you've got Cunningham you've got your tack line for the Jenica and you can actually see the continuous loops which are used for controlling the, the rake of the foil.